Welcome to this Cabinet Vision tutorial where we will explore the uses of the IntelliJoins function. The IntelliJoins function is a feature of Cabinet Vision Ultimate. Moved. To understand what an IntelliJoint is, it is best to show a visual example. Here we can see a cabinet interior. We can also see some adjustable shelf line balls here. These balls are tied to the shelf. If the shelf is removed from the cabinet, the line boring is removed also. This is because the line boring is classified as an IntelliJoint, which is tied directly to the adjustable shelf. We access the IntelliJoints catalog from the splash screen. Opening up the menu, we see the following. IntelliJoint selection, new, copy, rename, delete, Mirror IntelliJoint, Import IntelliJoint, Export IntelliJoint, and finally, Unit. Changing the selected IntelliJoints to three adjustable shelves, it now shows three view planes, detailing the selected IntelliJoint. Left shows the IntelliJoint from the end, middle shows a view along the joint, and the right shows a 3D perspective. We have more buttons down below. New operation, copy operation, and delete operation. The operation name is also detailed here. Operations are listed in the field here. The operation configurations are shown here also. They include operation, master, type, face, X position, Y position, depth, space length, diameter width, quantity, and tool. The IntelliJoints, being a derivative of an American standard, have a mix of imperial and metric values. We need to type our metric values as an IMP and then the metric value preceding it in bracketry. We can click on each operation and it will indicate our selection by showing the operation in red. This specific IntelliJoint, when activated, applies its operation to the slave part, which means that the drilling will apply outward, or the part that the master part butts into. We also have a sample size detailed in the bottom left. IntelliJoint position can be seen to the right of this. And finally, the description is shown at the foot of the dialog box. The test button accesses another screen, which shows the IntelliJoint in use. It shows different example choices to view, as well as the ability to pan, zoom, and explore the IntelliJoint to find the best way to view it. An IntelliJoint is crucial to its own thickness. This is because, like shown in the diagram, the IntelliJoint situates in between a master and slave part. The IntelliJoint we have explored has a thickness of zero, which means slave and master part need to physically touch for the IntelliJoint to be engaged. If the thickness of an IntelliJoint was five millimeters, it would mean that it would need to activate once the slave and master part situate 5mm away from each other. For the purpose of this training, we will only be working with an IntelliJoint thickness of zero. We can figure the thickness later on. In this tutorial, we will create a CAM and DAL IntelliJoint. Pressing the new button in the top left, we will name this IntelliJoint Test CAM and DAL. Entering into the newly created IntelliJoint, we will go ahead and add a new operation. This operation will be called CAM hole. Since it is to be drilled from the shelf it is applied to, we will set the master value from slave to master. We will leave the type as bore. Moving on to face, 
we will select which face the joint applies to. We are not limited to the specific face that the IntelliJoint is built on. So we will go up and we will select left. The X position will need to be configured by pressing the edit formula button here. This allows an equation to be placed in the following field. I will set the value to be 34 millimeters, otherwise expressed as IMP open bracket 34 close bracket. This can also be typed out as 34 mm, standing for 34 millimeters. The Y equation will be set to dy divided by 2. Therefore, this will always situate in the middle of the part. The depth will be set to 12.7 millimeters. I will express this as 12.7 mm. The diameter will also be set to 15 mil. The quantity will be left at 1. And now we have configured the cam hole. Now we will create the peg hole, making sure to refer to the diagram linked in the description of this video. This will be created by copying the cam hole operation, then making further modifications. The peg hole has been modified so that it places itself to the normal face of the IntelliJoint and aligns with all the dimensions of the diagram we are referring to. This means the X position is DX divided by 2, meaning half the thickness of the part it is applied to divided by 2. The Y position stays the same to align itself with the cam hole. The depth and diameter are then changed, aligning with the diagram provided. And finally, using copy operation, we will create the stud hole. The stud hole has been configured as follows. Under master, it has been set to slave, so it applies to the slave component, therefore outward of the master component. It is still a bore, and the face has been set to normal. The depth has been changed to 12.7 millimeters, and the diameter width is seven millimeters. We will now test this IntelliJoint on a cabinet. I have placed a base cabinet with a single fixed shelf inside. This fixed shelf still has operations, so we need to delete those operations, as well as including our own IntelliJoint in their place. Moving to face, I will click where the fixed shelf is, right click, and then proceed to edit. I can manage the parts operations from the reports button up the top. I can see the existing operations listed here. And so I will need to clear these operations by deleting them to then go through and add my IntelliJoint. As seen here, the fixed shelf no longer has its mounting holes. We will return to the fixed shelf edit so we can place our IntelliJoints in the report section. Selecting new operation, we will now select the work plane to apply the IntelliJoint to. Pressing next, we will now select what operation to apply. It is already on IntelliJoint, so I'm going to click Next. We will then scroll through this list and pick the IntelliJoint we wish to select. Here I can see Test Cam and Dowel. We will press Next to advance to the next menu. Now we will assign the value to the width, length and thickness of the IntelliJoint. I'll set the width to part thickness with no additional value. I'll set the length to part width, also with zero, and the thickness value will be set to zero. The zero thickness means that the two parts must touch in order for the IntelliJoint to activate. Like mentioned before, if I placed five mil in this field, I would need to have a gap of five mil between slave and master parts for the IntelliJoint to activate. The next screen will orientate the IntelliJoint. If I had left, the shown information has been preset by myself. I have rotated the joint by 180 degrees. If I had left it at zero, the cam hole would face upwards, which works against what we would like. We would like to set this cam facing down on the shelf, therefore hiding it from any viewing angle. 
Through trial and error, spend some time in this screen to understand the different functions and how they affect the IntelliJoint. This concludes all we need for this menu, so we will click Finish. The IntelliJoint can be seen activating up here. We'll now click Return to see it in effect. Going to 3D, I can now view the IntelliJoint applied to the side of the cabinet which we chose. Our IntelliJoint can be modified to adjust its placement on the master part. A scenario we will play out is adding another cam hole and peg operation set. Therefore, this edge will have two sets of cam and dowel pins. We will return to Cam Editor to modify the existing IntelliJoint. To add additionals in, I will go through and copy each of the primary operations seen here. We create a secondary set of operations to represent the second cam we would like to add for this IntelliJoint. Here I have copied all primary operations. I have modified the Y position of each set of operations. The original set is now at dy divided by 3. Therefore, it is placed a third of the way along the y position of said part. If I set the same y position for my secondary set of operations, they would place over the top of the original operations. Therefore, a more complicated equation is needed. I have told mine to set the dy or width of the part and then minus one third. This will mirror the first set of operations position, but from the other side of the part. Here is the modified IntelliJoint when it is applied to both ends of a fixed shelf. We could repeat the process but using different equations to even place three on each end. This is the benefit of IntelliJoints. We configure the joints to our specification and to our liking. This concludes the introductory video on creating, modifying and emplacing IntelliJoints. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified of more video releases in the future.